Okay, so uh, yesterday we covered the Moment Rider, or however you pronounce uh, this guy's name. Today we're gonna be covering King, and I'm actually a bit more excited about him because I did some tests yesterday, I've just done a test today, and he's showing really good results, even though he's sort of a unit that doesn't do any damage at all, even with his basic attacks. So, if you don't know his skills, uh, his basic attack, uh, well, first of all, uh, none of his three attacks hit the enemy. It sort of like uh, only does a pulsing effect around them, meaning that he will do zero damage regardless of what build you have on him, which is a blessing and a curse. So, uh, it's a good thing because it's easier to land debuffs. Uh, you're not uh, being affected by any like reflect damage, stuff like that. Uh, the bathing is, of course, uh, well, you're not doing any extra damage that would help in the end. Also, uh, one great thing about not doing damage is that you actually have a way easier time building him since you don't need anything like attack, you don't need anything like crit rate or crit damage since, uh, again, you're not even touching the enemy, you will not need anything like precision as uh, basic attacks don't need to land since they don't hit the enemy either. So yeah, uh, Let's read over his skills. So first of all, his basic attacks. Uh, each time he procs his basic attack animation, he has a 15% chance to apply the resistance now for 14 seconds. And if the target is a creature, uh, this of course applies to random mobs on the field, uh, bosses, raid bosses, stuff like that. Uh, he also has a 15% chance to apply crit damage taken up for 14 seconds. So this is how much crit damage uh, you're increasing uh, with that effect. So yes, he is a PvE mostly unit as some of his skills only affect creatures, but that's exactly where we're gonna be testing him out. Now the second skill, this is not the most important part in my opinion, but it, it, basically each time uh, he uses this skill, he has a 90% chance to apply Oblivion for 20 seconds if the mob is an uh, creature and if he applies Oblivion successfully, he also adds attack down for 20 seconds uh, to that same creature. And this is an AoE attack, it sort of attacks in a cone in front of him, and uh, it does have a decent range to hit most of the enemies in front of him. And now the third skill, this is the main selling point. So this, uh, compared to the third skill, or second skill, whatever you want to call it, uh, is the main reason why he is so good. So. Whenever he uses the skill, he uh, sort of activates this pulsing heart, uh, and that heart basically hits enemies five times, and each hit has a 55% chance to apply resistance down for 20 seconds. Uh, if he successfully applies resistance down, he also gets accuracy up, so even easier to build him as you won't even need too much accuracy on him, especially for those high resistance scenarios. And on top of that, if the target is a creature, again, he starts stacking that crit damage taken up and with a 55% chance uh, to apply level 1, you're on average getting around level 3 crit damage taken up just by using the skill. And yeah, just for reference how his animations look like, so the basic attack is very simple, he just does this a pulsing heart. Uh, it shows a very small range, but it does hit, as you can see, he is landing the debuffs on the boss. Uh, there's the resistance down, there's the crit rate, uh, or rather crit damage taken up. Uh, the first charge skill is sort of a cone in front of him, and as you can see, it applies debuffs after it lands. And the third one is very similar to the basic attack, it just starts sort of a pulsing heart, which keeps applying uh, debuffs to the boss, as you can see, level 4. Started with level 3, uh, now it's at level 4 to 5, and the damage went up by 2, uh, of course it dropped by 1, and the resistance went by 3 or 4. So now to test his damage out, uh, I've done two tests for 10 minutes, meaning that uh, in the first test we're testing out a team uh, such as uh, the Water Cleave. I wanted to test Water uh, instead of the Fire one, because Fire Cleave already has crit damage taken up, and while other summoners do not have that, it would be a bit unfair to those, so I feel like using a non-fire cliff will allow for the most, most equal comparison between all three summoners. So, uh, 
today uh, water cliff uh, water because he lands a lot of debuffs he lands uh, provoke on his third skill he lands a freeze he lands a attribute damage taken uh, or rather attribute damage dealt down he also lands attack break attack speed break a lot of debuffs that benefit uh, units whose damage scale with debuffs so of course uh, we're gonna be using the galleon uh, king will be in the off soling slot and our main damage dealer will be the Nadian Ha, who scales really well uh, with the debuffs. And I've done this test for 10 minutes. So uh, let's check for the exact second I start attacking. And it started at 07, so we're gonna skip to 1007 and see the exact damage that is visible. And done. So with King, uh, what we're going to be looking at is the total damage dealt because uh, King not only increases Nadin Ha's damage, he also increases Galleon's and Cleave's damage by quite a bit. In the other run, uh, we will be checking all damage combined as well. So in here, we can see that Nadin Ha did 3795, oh Jesus, those numbers. Then Cleave did additional 5 million, almost 6. And Galen did uh, around almost 4 million. Now uh, we skip to the other part of the run, and this is where I tested a different team. Instead of building King, I have built my Thessalian up on a swift uh, damage build. Now keep in mind, uh, my Thessalian is awakening level 15, he does have level 5 book, uh, which leads to a very well upgraded damage dealer in most cases you may even be using an f4 you may be using a damage dealer that does not have awakening 15 or anything like that so this is sort of uh, the best case scenario of a damage dealer that is built on very expensive stuff and you should take that into account when comparing the two because the sardian uh, requires the current one i have requires five dupes uh, whereas King, he quite literally doesn't need any extra awakenings. All he needs is a natural summon and a max skills on his abilities. So now uh, let's check for the point where I start attacking. And uh, that happens at 1330. So we're going to be skipping to 2330. And seeing uh, the total damage that I've done. So it should happen in just a few seconds. And let's stop. Okay, so with the Sarion, the total damage looks like uh, 297, 43, 298, 215, 5751. Whoops, I did something wrong. There we go. Then Cleave did uh, almost 5 million, and Galen did around 3. So probably not a surprise you're seeing that the sand is already pulling ahead of uh, the damage but if you check the numbers that equal units did so for example not in Ha her damage seems to differ by a good was that 25 percent maybe so all of these units will have around 25% more damage. However, with the Tessadian run, uh, we're gonna have to include the Tessadian's damage as well. So if we calculate uh, the damage from the first run, we will get that this and uh, this. This is the total. So in total, uh, we are seeing 47.6 million damage. Now for the bottom one, let's check it out this seems to be just around 6 million if I'm not wrong that and like that so uh, the total here seems to be around 59.1 million so the damage uh, differs a decent amount I would say uh, especially if you have a well-built damage dealer if you have a worse build damage dealer, or for example, uh, you have to take this into account as my cliff is built on pretty much full tongue builds. So if you're using Orbia, the damage increase you get from here to here will be way higher as Orbia is in a lot of cases, even your main damage dealer. So 
uh, the difference between the total amounts uh, will differ way more than it did for me because for me Cleef is barely doing any damage so if you're an Orbia user uh, Keen will be even more impactful for Kina, uh, you're probably seeing something similar to me because Kinas are usually not built on damage. So yeah, overall, uh, King, awesome support. If you're comparing those solo scenarios, the damage uh, will still be usually a bit bigger uh, by using a damage dealer. However, uh, if you check King in those more uh, multiplayer scenarios, such as raids, even guild raid, uh, you'll notice that king will usually be the superior option because it only takes like one or two kings to completely boost uh, the damage with that level 10 crit damage taken up effect and if uh, the rest of uh, the people are bashing into the boss uh, the damage will be sig significantly higher and to test it out i of course uh, tried doing some raids with him so in our team we're pretty much running uh, regular raid teams, however, we have added two kings, mine is currently built on speed, I wasn't sure uh, what the other king was built onto, but yeah, even that didn't stop us from stacking the effect, and with these teams, uh, we're basically banking on the single target damage dealers that scale with debuffs to do all of the damage, and you'll see how the run went. It took a, a lot of testing, so we did in Mitas, we did in Naraka, just to see how it works out, but check the damage as well as the, the damage taken up effect on the boss once we start doing damage. And yeah, uh, it's currently sitting at level 7 crit damage, as you can see boss didn't even jump and he is already at around 20% HP which is very unusual with uh, a team that only uses one damage dealer unless you are of course running that whole Tiana Verdi uh, superior team but yeah the run took around uh, was less than 40 seconds it wasn't even close to being a fail to kill the boss before his jump phase so yeah not the high score of course but this is just a few runs of testing and we are able to achieve a 39 second run, the crit damage was stacked to around level 8 if I believe. So yeah, overall, uh, is he the best option for solo runs? Probably not unless you are an Orbia user, but is he awesome for raids and guild raids and those are different scenarios where multiple people are attacking? Yes, most definitely, as you can see, the runs just fly through especially if you have a decent uh, teammates so yeah just a small video about this and by the way uh, i wanted to do on how to ruin him as well but there really isn't too much to talk about uh he needs two stats he needs attack speed and he needs accuracy everything else is really not important you can put whatever other stats you feel like uh, most cases since he cannot do any damage you will find most use from hp or defense so uh, your build should ideally be swift with any offset uh, i have a broken set because that's where uh, my best attack speed runes were so this one had like 15 and this one had like 20. so uh, the stats uh get attack speed get a lot of attack speed because it will allow him to proc the first kill more and uh, get a lot of accuracy so he actually, actually lands the divas and anything else i would say just pour it into defense or hp so that he doesn't uh, die as soon uh, as or rather sooner than you want him to and yeah that's it and i'll see you in the next one